If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. The comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the views of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliates or sponsors. I'm Kevin Moore and you're now listening to The Moore Show. For the next hour, I'll cover subjects of an alternative variety that most shows do not touch. On today's show, we'll be joined by Dr. Len Horowitz, where he'll discuss his research into water vaccines and emerging viruses. So stay tuned, enjoy, and I'll be right back. Mr. Show or a guest? Want to know more about The Moore Show and upcoming guests? Then log on to www.themoreshow.co.uk. You're listening to The More Show, and here's your host, Kevin Moore. Welcome back to the show. I'm about to be joined with our guest, Dr. Len Horowitz. Just a bit of background on Len. He is an internationally known authority figure in behavioural science, public health education and health practice management. He received his doctorate from Tufts University and was awarded a fellowship to do behavioural research at the University of Rochester and later earned a Master of Public Health degree in behavioural science from Harvard University. Len is one of healthcare's most captivating motivational speakers. He has directed a multidisciplinary health centre for over a decade and currently serves as president of Tetrahydron Inc., a non-profit health educational corporation. Len... Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. It's an honor to have you on the show. Um, just tell us a bit about the work that you do. Well, thank you very much. Gee whiz, you know, talking about myself, uh, you know, I've been really a humble servant of the Creator. I've just been doing my thing, and I really give all the blessings and creative uh, power to the Creator himself because, you know, I would be nowhere, and the work that I've been doing has been, I feel extraordinary and a lot of people feel the same way and I just I'm grateful that I've been able to do it. So how would you class yourself Len? Would it be religious or spiritual? Yeah I'm very very spiritual you know I'm extremely spiritual I basically pray all the time. (laughs) My position I think that's why. Well, I'm here to get the truth for the public, much like yourself. So let's start and give me your take on what you think about the uh, swine flu pandemic. Well, the swine flu pandemic is a hideous atrocity that's a genocide. If you look at what the standard definition of genocide is, it's the mass killing or enslaving of people for profit, politics, or ideology. And we've got all three operating here. There's a lot of companies, Baxter Corporation particularly, that has just sold a lot, uh, multi-billions of dollars of vaccines to the U.K. government as well as other nations across Europe. They're an American corporation that is probably one of the least trustworthy of all corporations in the world. And that they're apparently linked to the big boys. They're really linked to a canvas and that this company is really engaged with the human genome project pirates that I exposed in the book, DNA Pirates of the Sacred Spiral, the global industrialists that uh, really run everything. I call them the military medical petrochemical pharmaceutical cartel, and they have their fingers in a lot of different pies, and they have their fingers in Baxter's and pie, and the flu issue, you see, is a psychological operation that is leading to an intoxication that's going to lead to depopulation. In essence, the fright, and you've been witnessing it in the UK when I was there a couple weeks ago, you know, the teleprompters, there's just 
constant barrage of propaganda how horrible this flu is that it's getting worse that it's now declared by the world health organization level six high risk all officials worldwide are telling you that by the fall you're going to have the really major recombination of both H5N1 and H1N1, the That's avian right. and, the, and the swine flu combined. Now, if you look at how did that happen, you know, it just didn't start with the Mexican flu. You have to go to YouTube and Google uh, Dr. Len Horowitz's special report, Mexican flu, and then you can go to the website, www.fluscam.com. And you can get the background that I've already laid out on YouTube, and that involves Novavax Corporation, a leading supplier of vaccines in America, as well as Baxter Corporation, the UK's and Europe's premier vaccine producer. And you have to understand where these people are getting their viruses, where they're getting their uh, technology for reverse engineering or reverse genetically engineering the types of viruses that they're now not just producing for vaccinations but they're actually loosing in the human family you have uh, this recombination capability this capacity for laboratory viruses that mutate rapidly because they're unstable, because they're not millennia old. Yeah. They're new, and so they mutate rapidly, so you can follow them fairly adequately, as Dr. Gibbs did before he was discredited by the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control without even having them give his common sense analysis and conclusion to any uh, credit whatsoever. In essence, this was the Australian um, researcher that worked on Tamiflu and came out with the same conclusion that I've drawn, which is that the flus that are currently circulating are laboratory releases. Right. And I don't believe that they're accidents. I mean, what happened then, Len, to the, av the avian pandemic or the SARS? Well, the SARS pandemic was a psychological operation that was a test. It was an actual test to see how the media could be used to create frights and panic and then have the World Health Organization step in for the first time in history and dictate global public health response, biodefense strategies. You have to understand the history of the World Health Organization and its power in that regard it stems from the Rockefeller-directed military, medical, again, petrochemical, pharmaceutical cartel that evolved out of Germany's IG Farben organization that was partnered with Rockefeller Standard Oil and Hermann Schmitz owned more shares of Rockefeller stock. He was in charge of the Bayer Corporation that was running Auschwitz. And so you, you have to understand the infamy of their history, uh, how these corporations evolved and where the money has gone. Uh, Hitler said it best, you know, he says we're, we're engaged in the new ordnung, new order. And the money that uh, at the end of World War II that Martin Bormann escaped with, uh, it was invested for the rise of the Fourth Reich. The Third Reich was over. They were now already seeking ways of uh, making money for the Fourth Reich, which is the New Ordnung, or New Order, or New World Order, which is globalization, which is this whole neo-colonialization of the planet. And now you begin to understand why we now have one world health organization, one world court, one world peacekeeping force, NATO, why we have uh, one world economy that we're evolving into with these different uh, trading 
Ja. Communities. And so you, you have this understanding of the bigger picture, and that's very important when you're looking at infectious diseases and pandemics, because the truth is that no epidemic or pandemic in Earth's history has ever evolved free from socio-political upheaval. It's always been that there's economic collapse, which is currently happening globally, which is fueling war mentality and Governments typically go to war when the people are down and out, when the economic uh, you know, colla- economy collapses, then you give people the uh, direction to go to war, and you get them basically distracted off of uh, the, the situation, and you also get to control the populations, reduce the populations. That's the bigger picture. Yeah. Now, the Rockefeller, for those who, who have a hard time appreciating that or people who don't believe that, all you have to do is look at who is funding today's global depopulation agenda. The Population Council, uh, which is Negative Population Growth, Inc., uh, in New York and elsewhere, the origins was the Rockefeller brothers set up the Population Council of the City of New York, and they have evolved into the world's leading population control, population reduction organizations that have been promoting too many people on the planet and all the propaganda and the spins. You know, the reality is, you know, even though if you're in a big city, you probably would not believe this or understand it, but we don't have too many people on this planet. We have resources that are not allocated with any intention, any humanitarian intention. They're all directed by economics and profiteering, in essence, of yeah. humanity's suffering. You know, that's why Concert for the Living Water that's coming up this coming weekend is so important, because you see that water can not only run engines because of hydrogen fuel, it's easy to get hydrogen out of water, and you can use that just like the sun uses it, all the solar radiation that we're receiving, and that energy can be harnessed. The reality is that it's all coming from water, hydrogen, and, you know, the element in water, and the universe is full of water. Yeah. Uh, The silver hydrosols, the product called oxy-silver, is the top of the line silver hydrosol that can be used to completely eliminate infectious diseases from planet earth and it can be produced you know inexpensively it can be transmitted easily it has a great shelf life for stability sure. it has no risks it has only benefits it can totally wipe out bacteria viruses fungus and parasites and so you can that's, it's simply mineral water with a nanoparticle-sized silver in it, and that, that was advanced by NASA scientists to keep the astronauts healthy in space, and it's been suppressed by the drug industrialists who want to make money off of humanity's suffering, declaring war against everything, war against the microbial world, antibiotics. War against flu, war against cancer, war against this, war against that. It's this whole insane war mentality. Instead of probiotics, we're talking antibiotics. Right. And so all of these things are very important to realize that we're in a, a mess today only because the global industrialists have designed it that way. Okay, well, we will move on to the live H2O and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss, uh, we'll rediscuss the oxy silver. But just, just moving on from the last question, so you, would you say, well, you've, you've gathered evidence, haven't you, that government contracts uh, have been made under which numerous viruses have been manufactured by uh, biological weapons contractors, haven't you? Yes, in fact, in the UK, you have Dr. James Robertson, who is the, I would say, uh, the chief. Uh, suspect in the current flu pandemic. I think you have to study Dr. Robertson's work and you'll find that he has material trade agreements. He can make money as soon as they now have been stockpiling the vaccines. He makes a lot of money. And so this is really what is sadly the case. And 
uh, he is working not only for the World Health Organization and the chief decision maker for the Economic Union, the European Union, and that, you know, he's the guy who decides what viruses are going to be put into vaccinations, and he's the guy that holds the proprietary patents on the reverse engineering of genetics. He's in the UK, and there is this vaccine pipeline that runs from the UK to the United States. So our companies, such as Novavax here, yeah. are dependent on Dr. Robertson and his World Health Organization think tank that determines what vaccines are going to be prepared. And that means that they've got to know in advance what viruses that they've loosed from their labs in order to produce, you know, whatever marketable product. And my own personal take is if you really study vaccines, they're hideously toxic. The entire field is completely a fraud and that they're so much more deadly than people realize. The, re the reality is that natural immunity, you know, God-given gift of natural protection against infectious diseases has been undermined by this whole concept that in order to get protection, you need to intoxicate the human organism. You need to inject foreign RNA and foreign DNA and foreign proteins from bacteria, viruses, fungus, yeast, chicken embryo, bovine fetal serum, monkey kidney tissues, with smallpox vaccine, it's cow pus. Uh, there was a, a military, uh, a Marine, a United States Marine, yesterday in the newspaper in the L.A. Times. He's fighting for his life. He, he got a smallpox vaccine and here in the United States and immediately developed acute lymphocytic leukemia. Well, you know, that's, that, that's not really unusual. That's... These are happening all the time when you understand that vaccines inject virtually permanently into the human body viruses and, and cause autoimmune diseases where your immune system is not capable of functioning normally, then it, it starts to attack you. It starts to attack itself. And so this is what's going on when you begin to understand fully what vaccinations are about. As, and look at what's happening. The, there's Codex Elementarius legislation. The German and London cartel is really causing a uh, elimination. They call it harmonization yeah. of all of the botanicals, the supplements, vitamins, minerals, homeopathics. Everything has got to be regulated. People's ability to use nature for healing is completely under attack. And that's because these drug industrialists don't want any competition whatsoever. So everything is, is a hideous toxic, it, toxicity. It's a genocide. Mass killing or enslaving to drugs, enslaving to vaccines of, of the people for profit. So are, are you saying that the vaccines are contaminated? What's your take on that? Yes, they're hideously contaminated, and this is what we just released on YouTube. Uh, you can go onto YouTube and type in on your search engine, uh, Swine Flu Pandemic 2009 Baxter Corporation. And I just put it up there last night, and what it is is it shows you that the Baxter Corporation that has just stockpiled those billions of dollars of vaccines for the UK and other European nations, they actually sent out avian flu contaminated vaccines with live avian flu that was somehow they could, had no explanation. They, they said it was an accident. Well, gee whiz, how do you, how do you produce in a flu vaccine that's supposed to be a standard flu vaccine suddenly find the most, uh, pathogenic strains of influenza in the world that kills 60 percent of the people that get infected with it in, an, in a world that is screaming fear that this may emerge how do you do that yeah. you do it because it's sabotage it's industrial espionage operating here this these are the people who are so unscrupulous they don't care that 60 percent of the population is killed. That's what they want. 
That's their objective. But they want to make money in the process of doing it. And so this is a perfect, perfect plan. And again, when you, when you think about the fact that this company, that the UK government has just invested all this money in buying their vaccines, not only did they do that, not only did they loose already the avian flu to 18 European nations, but they are, have a history of doing these kinds of things. They basically spread HIV AIDS through blood clotting factor eight, along with the Bayer Corporation. And again, Bayer Corporation was the principal of IG Farben. For all practical purposes, they ran the Third Reich. Their top officials were the top SS. And so they, they, Baxter literally sent out the AIDS virus, HIV, and contaminated blood products. They also killed thousands of people with a cheap heparin substitute. They Instead of paying $900 per unit, they were paying $9 per cheap chemical substitute for what they should have been giving high-quality product for blood, uh, bl- blood uh, support for people. And they also have a history of being sued by the United States federal government for fraud in the manufacture and sales of a medical pump that's been used and and sadly killed a lot of people. So this is, again, why I say Baxter Corporation is one of the most untrustworthy of all companies in the world. And isn't it interesting that this is who the world is relying upon for protection against this alleged horrible plague? Well, I mean... It's possible then, isn't it, that the government has the capacity to force you into having vaccinations in a state of emergency then? Well, in the United States, that is absolutely certain now. Yeah, the Bush administration made sure of that, and then the Barack Obama administration, they have likewise uh, followed the Bush administration's policies. So we're preparing here. They, they've told us already that every American, by this fall, when this recombinant, man-made, Baxter-produced, uh, and Novavax-produced, with the support of the UK, Dr. Robertson's team, produced a virus, spreads and gets worse. We're supposed to all have three injections by this fall. And the stockpiling has already begun, and the preparations for from Homeland Security. You see, this is a, a national security uh, business. And I can tell you in the United States, there's a Dr. Michael Osterholm, who is a complete prostitute for the drug industrialists. He has been appointed by American Homeland Security to dictate who's going to get injected, infected, intoxicated, and quarantined, which means that they're going to send a lot of people to concentration camps here in America. So I I think that this is probably what's going to also happen in many European nations. Well, let's go back just a little bit there. I just want to go back to your 10th book um, on emerging viruses and vaccinations. Now, this, that, that, what's that book actually deal with them? Just, just briefly describe the book for us. Yes, well, Emerging Viruses, AIDS and Ebola is a book that became a national bestseller and was just uh, several months ago when Barack Obama was... Uh, campaigning for the presidency, his minister, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, was demonized for saying that the AIDS pandemic is an Anglo-American genocide waged against people of color. And brought before the national press, he said, well, have you read Dr. Leonard Horowitz's book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola? So that book is worldwide. It's famous. It's really been the the motivation and the documentation to substantiate why many governments have decided, you know, particularly in the uh, Muslim world, have determined that there is something uh, insidious and nefarious and genocidal ongoing with the companies, the multinational corporations that are Anglo-American based, and that this uh, has become the definitive text worldwide for exposing the uh, hideous abuse of the public's trust in the vaccine arena. And so the, the most 
compelling of all documents in the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola is literally the United States government contracts under which numerous AIDS-like and Ebola-like viruses were bioengineered by the United States Army's sixth top biological weapons contracting lab. They were called Litton Bionetics. And the man who was credited for having discovered the AIDS virus in 1984, his name is Dr. Robert Gallo, actually was uh, overseeing Litton Bionetics' team. Len, we're going to take a break there, so uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mr. Show or a guest? Want to know more about The More Show and upcoming guests? Then log on to www.themoreshow.co.uk. You're listening to The More Show, and here's your host, Kevin Moore. Welcome back to the show. I'm currently joined here with our guest, Dr. Len Horowitz, where we've been discussing his work on emerging viruses. Um, now, Glenn, just uh, one thing that we were discussing before was uh, vaccines. And um, if we're not going to take our vaccines, what, what should we take instead? Well, there's a couple different things. I mean, you, you, you know, I'll, I'll be very frank with you. I told you at the beginning of this program, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. Sure. And... You know, I can tell you that my grandfather, he died at age 93 because he, he decided he wanted to die. Because my father took his beloved Betty, his wife, away, put her in a nursing home, and he told my father, if you do this, I'm going to die. This was a man who smoked camel, unfiltered camel cigarettes for 75 years, and that didn't kill him. You know, he died because he had a spiritual calling to serve another human being in love, with love. And when you take away the purpose in life, then what happened in this man's case, and I was there when the surgeon came up from the morgue and said to my father, you know, Mr. Horowitz, for the life of me, I can't understand how your father could have lived for the last 20 years. Every bone, muscle, and organ throughout his entire body was riddled with cancer. You know, and, I, and I've seen this in my own life, and people who are listening, you know, sometimes when getting sick is inconvenient, you just say, I am not going to get sick, or you say to God, please protect me. I can't afford to get sick right now. And gee whiz, what happens is in most cases you don't get sick. Have you had that experience? I have. Yeah. I have. So, I, so really what's taking place there is there's a spiritual blessing and a preventative power within you to keep you healthy, keep you active, keep you doing something that's important to you. So... The answer to your question is when you ask, what can people do? Well, attitude is so important, and spirituality is fundamental. Now, having said that, you know, I personally, I use everything from prayer and hands-on healing, and then I get engaged in, if I want crutches, if I don't want to just really attune to the Holy Spirit power within, I want crutch, you know, I'll use oxy-silver. It is a powerful, powerful, broad-spectrum antimicrobial. And if I don't have that, gee whiz, you know, if I don't have a good silver hydrosol, I would probably turn to colloidal silver. And I don't like taking that every day because it accumulates in the tissues, but in a pinch in where you have a plague coming and you have a lot of fear, if you want to use that as a crutch, that's fine. You know, vitamin C in megadoses is a great antiviral. And so, you know, you can, you know, stockpile some vitamin C. Uh, garlic is a, is a good antimicrobial. You know, with anthrax, you know, people who ate a lot of garlic didn't have to worry about anthrax. That's right. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do naturally that prevent infectious diseases. And you have to understand, even with Ebola infections, 10% of the people survive Ebola. Now, again, what does that say? You know, what's the difference between that 10% and the other 90%? And again, I, I look personally at spirituality, and I look at that if we get sick, typically, uh, sickness is a way of purging. I, I would go on to fluscam.com, if you're listening. Go to fluscam.com and read what flu really is. Flu is really a wonderful, natural way typically to detoxify your body. You know, if you're drinking a lot of dairy or eating ice cream and eating a lot of cheese, 
That's a, a mucus former. You're taking in proteins from other species. Your body needs to spit it out. It needs to develop the sneezing and the mucus that you expectorate and get rid of it. You know, and so this is what a flu is. And, you know, it's natural. It's healthy. Uh, we encourage our children not to get vaccinated. We don't have, we have three beautiful children and not one is vaccinated with anything. We encourage them, for example, to get the chicken pox. And so I know that that seems strange in today's world, but frankly, you know, I'm old enough to remember back when chicken pox was not such a big deal. Yeah. You know, you miss a ba maybe a week of school and, you know, you stay home and you watch TV. Yeah. That's it. You've, you've done a lot of work on, on DNA. And uh, your your other book, one of your, sorry, one of your many books, DNA Pirates of the Sacred uh, Spiral. What did you learn about DNA? DNA is best described as an antenna to God. It is a coil because it's in that shape of spinning, spiraling coil because everything in the universe is spinning and spiraling in water. And that's exactly what DNA is. DNA is a sound and light receiver and transmitter. It is called photons and phonons for intercellular communication and cellular upregulation. That literally means that you're actually being created as a whole physical being out of a quantum field of water hydrosonically. Hydro is, is water, sonically is sound. Sound and light signaling is literally what is recreating you nano instant to nano instant you're actually being recreated in a quantum field the best definition of who you are based on our understanding of electrogenetics and water science and water by the way is the matrix in which dna operates it's a liquid crystal water is a liquid crystal superconductor a creative juice in other words and sound and light signals are superconducted through water. And you know, like when you have a motor, and there's inside the motor, there's, there is uh, metal plates that are magnetized. And to increase the horsepower of that engine, there's copper wire that's wound around the plates. That winding is a coiling. That coiling increases the energy dramatically, and that's what DNA is. It is actually like a Tesla coil. It enhances the energy that comes in through spirituality, through sound and light signaling. And that this is the definition of who you are then. You're a digital, bio-holographic, precipitation, crystallization, miraculous manifestation of divine frequency vibrations coming out of water. So digital is, ma is mathematical. Math is the creator's language. Everything, all the laws of the universe operate, the laws of physics operate because of math. The fundamental musical mathematical matrix of reality we now know. I have the great privilege of working with the world's leading physicists and mathematicians, and we now actually know that there's only nine core creative frequencies to this entire universe. And we've constructed models of what the universe is now made up of and how it's structured, just like all of sacred geometry is structured by those nine core creative frequencies, at the heart of which is 528 hertz frequency, which is the closest thing that we know to love. And the love frequency, that vibration and that good feeling of joy in your heart when you are in love, that's a frequency, it's a vibrational energy, and that's 528 hertz frequency. Uh, so we're looking at now understanding who we are and how we're made, and if you understand that you don't need to pop magic pills to cure every ill and believe that you need to go to a medical deity an md in order to get your medicine well would you say water does deliver messages yeah absolutely As a matter of fact this coming thursday night you you can go to 
www.liveh2o.tv and watch uh, watch me. I have the honor of presenting Dr. Masaru Emoto with the Live H2O People's Award for Humanitarian Science. He is the Japanese doctor. He's been featured in What the Bleep Do We Know. Uh, he has two New York Times best-selling books. He has shown these beautiful structures, snowflake-like water crystal structures responding to prayer like he he's developed a very unique uh, flash freezing cryogenic microscopy technology whereby if you take water from various sources and you flash freeze it and put it under a microscope in the cold room at 20,000 magnification it has certain structure and it actually has messages and he shows you that if you pray over that water, it changes its structure. In other words, that Holy Spirit power that I mentioned before yeah. actually can move the water's molecular structure into what is called a six-sided hexagonal shape, which is the principal shape of nature's six uh, organic chemistry ring, carbon-6. We're carbon-6 beings. Organic molecules are made up of six-sided shapes, just like the honeycomb that a bee makes. So that, the reason for that is, again, because you have 528 hertz frequency, which is if you add 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 8 is 15, then 1 plus 5 is 6, you're looking at the third note of the original musical scale, do, re, mi, mira, gestorum in Latin, miracles in English, it's a six, M-I-6. In fact, that's how British Secret Service got its name when you really start to uh, pull all of the pieces of the puzzle together. You begin to realize that there's a code, the code of life that they have been using at the highest levels of the cr cryptocracy and the oligarchy and uh, the secret societies. They operate using this kind of knowledge. And so we now have this knowledge and that the, the fundamental understanding of who we are and how we can best take care of ourselves and our planet is through this understanding of energy, spirituality, mathematics, music, as well as water science. But what happens, Len, when uh, water gets polluted then? Well, first of all, it, under a microscope, it looks like raw sewage. It breaks out the structure. You no longer have these beautiful six-sided hexagonal-shaped crystal clusters that look like snowflakes. They look, it looks literally like puke. It looks like raw sewage. Mm. And that's what happens when you pollute it with chlorine and fluoride and heavy metals and uh, organophosphate pesticides. It literally ruins its sacred geometry. And so that this is what is interesting, the power of prayer again, and this is what we're, we're doing with Live H2O on Sunday, the 21st of June. We're asking the world to pray with us over the living water internationally to literally return it to its natural sacred structure. It involves prayer. It involves faith. It, this is not going to work for anybody who's listening who has no faith. This is fascinating because that is actually, it's part of the covenant or contract. There is clearly, uh, for people who understand that prayer does work, and like if you experience, for example, like you mentioned, you know, thinking and feeling and believing that you don't want to get sick because you can't afford to not be well yeah. and work, and you then say to yourself, hey, I can't get sick, please, God, keep me healthy. And suddenly you stay healthy. That's a prayer. That prayer was put out with some amount of faith. And that is the key. It's, it's been the key f for eternity. It's been heralded by everybody from Jesus on down. Jesus told everybody that was healed by him, he said, it is by your faith and trust that you are healed. That's in Matthew. You can read that. 
but so this is the key the, that unlocks the covenant, the contract, to really the source of sustenance, source of health, source of all prosperity, is the Creator. And there, is, there are angels that operate. There's an etheric realm that operates. In other, in other words, there's a parallel universe when we understand the mathematics and the physics of this world and all worlds. We understand that there are spiritual uh, places, and the Bible says it's not against flesh and blood with whom we do battle. In, in physics, it's called the quantum field, where there's all sorts of possibilities and probabilities. And in musical physics and mathematics, we call it the musical mathematical matrix of reality that in the religious world is called the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is near. He didn't mean it's temporally far off in time. Mm. He did not mean that when 2012 Mayan calendar ends, we're going to have kingdom of heaven. No, it's right here. It's right now. It is the quantum field in which angels play, and angels respond to prayer, and how we ourselves are in connection in divine communion with a universal source of, of inspiration, of sustenance, of health, of prospering, of miracles. All of these are possible. That's exactly what Jesus said. That's exactly what all of my team of physicists and mathematicians are now virtually proving. And, uh, and so this is a, a great time in history that if we want to recreate ourselves in optimal health and wellness and basically uh, bring our planet back to some semblance of sanity versus the hypocrisy of this pollution and degradation and cultural degeneration that many people that are awake realize it's urgent. But how do we know we're getting good water from a drinking tap? I mean, obviously there's all sorts of chemicals in the water, especially fluoride, which you're a very advocate against, and I, I can see why. Where do we get good water from? Well, the best water is actually rainwater in an area where you have a good atmosphere. Um, I, the gold measure for good water is rainwater, and the best that I know, uh, among the best in the world, is on the big island of Hawaii. And I, I do have a ministry that's established there for uh, this kind of uh, study and research and development. But the... Uh, for most people, you, you know, you can't harvest rainwater, and many environments, such as in London, maybe the atmosphere is not that pure. That's right. So where do you go from there? Well, spring water is, if it's fresh, if it's from a mountain, it's very, very powerful, and it's very, very healing, and it's very good. Uh, so the people who are in the mountain regions of, of Europe, they have a wonderful opportunity. Um, if you can't get good spring water, then what you have to do is a bunch of work. You've got to spend some money. You've got to take uh, either reverse osmosis or distilled water, and then you've got to put back the minerals that are lost out of it, and there's some great minerals, and there are some poor minerals. There's products out there that, that are fabulous, and there's products out in the world that are not very good, and so you've got to be a informed consumer and making choices about what minerals you're going to be adding to the water and then you want to energize the water water energizing occurs because of spinning and magnetic fields that as it runs through the springs of nature and through the earth it picks up the minerals and the, it spins and spirals and picks up the magnetic fields of the minerals. And this is now energized water. That's why there are some healing wells in the world, like in Lourdes, France, that, uh, and Karamitsu, Japan, why nice. there are miraculous healings that occur from people who drink various waters. So, you know, I, and again, if you don't have any of that, you go back to the power within, you know, pray. Pray over the water. Uh, there is a, a little water resonator that you can get uh, online, thewaterresonator.com. Uh, that, that is a very interesting, perfect circle of sound that is based on this technology I've been describing of the music 
of the spheres, of the music, of the mathematical matrix that you can put into the water, put it on your glassware, and say a prayer over it. And um, I would highly urge everyone who's interested in this topic to watch the film called Water, the movie. Water, the movie, is a fabulous film. And it has just been released from Russia. It's in the United States now. It's only been here for a couple months. And it's one of the featured programs for Friday night's events for Live H2O concert for the Living Water, this event that's coming up for three days. Right, okay. And would you say that people aren't drinking enough water? I mean, uh, I think far too many people just pick up a fizzy drink or, or a soda or, you know, or coffee. Would you say that's right, that people are dehydrated maybe? Totally. That is the principal cause of disease on planet Earth, is dehydration. And that, yes, uh, if you, you're supposed to be drinking at least half of your body weight converted to ounces in good, pure drinking water daily. And the pH, the part's hydrogen, or power of hydrogen, which really regulates all health. You know, everything, again, H2O is the chemical formula is H plus plus OH minus equals H2O. The H plus is hydrogen, and that pH, parts hydrogen, determines uh, so much of your ability to be healthy, stay healthy, and be free of infectious diseases. Like the flu cannot grow in you if you're alkalinized. Cancers, arthritic conditions, inflammatory conditions cannot grow in your body. In other words, you have a Holy Spirit-filled temple if that energy is there. And what, like in energy, you have to understand what is in electric, electricity, where does the energy come from? It comes from hydrogen electrons that are flowing through the copper wire. Likewise, in your body, all of the energy comes from electrons. And the electrons come from hydrogen. So pH parts hydrogen dictates the chemistry of the body. It dictates the piezoelectrical reactions and conductive uh, processes that are required for immunity. And so you begin to realize alkalinize. If you simply drink uh, pH 8 adjusted drinking water, and you bring your body to its ideal pH, which is somewhere between 7.3 and 7.8 pH, depending on the body organ, now you're going to be, you know, really among those people who don't have to worry about getting sick. And then my final question, how would you define the human body and spirit? Uh, I would, again, I'd say that the precise definition of the human body as it relates to spirit, is you are a digital, bio-holographic precipitation, like rain is a precipitation. It starts with a little nidus of maybe a little particle, suddenly water coalesces around it, and it makes a raindrop, and it falls from the sky, and it's our sustenance. So you're a digital, bio-holographic, biology and holography, Precipitation, crystallization. Every part of your body is a crystal structure. From the silicone to the water itself to the protein crystals uh, to the amino acids to all of the crystalline structures with uh, the genetics, all of this is a crystalline structure. And so digital bioholographic precipitation crystallization and you are a miracle. You are a miracle of the way the sound and light has been coming from this kingdom of heaven, in other words, this musical mathematical matrix by which our presence is actually conducted and directed, that there is even divine destinies, that we have purpose and callings in our lives that are written already for us, and we're almost just going through the, the motions, and, you know, Jesus said the steps of the righteous are ordered. This is what he was talking about. Righteousness means right standing. When you're standing right in the law, in the musical mathematical matrix, then life becomes this synchronicity, this symphony. You know, we have a master conductor 
master composer of a universal orchestra that's singing love songs, uplifting everything simultaneously, including you, making you be right here, right now, and literally directing you to have a higher calling of love and creativity in service. And so this is, you know, what I see as the human being. We're miracles, and we're miracle manifestors, and we're powerful co-creators, and we've just been dumbed down yeah. by design, by, by literally the global industrialists that are conducting this genocide have been successful at keeping us from the awakening that shall advance our consciousness and spirituality to its optimal expression so we can have lasting peace on earth, world health, and universal prosperity in all ways. That's the mission of Live H2O, Concert for the Living Water. Everyone should be attending to Live H2O this coming weekend, June 19th to the 21st, and everybody that still has any sense of love and compassion and faith and desires a better world, join us in prayer on June the 21st, 2009. You can get a lot of information at liveh2o.org, www.liveh2o.org. And then if you have websites, embed the player. We have liveh2o.tv broadcasting channel that you can put on your website for free, and then you'll be part of our network broadcasting to the world this magnificent service. Dr. Len Horowitz, we're at the bottom of the hour there, so thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. If you'd like to find out more on Len's work, go to www.drlenhorowitz.com or go to my site, themoreshow.co.uk, and look up Dr. Len Horowitz under Past Guests. So until next time, be safe. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website.